Good morning and welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, for those of you joining us via our drive and if we could get a couple car honks so we know you can hear us okay. Awesome, thank you so much. And welcome to those of you joining us via Facebook Live or listening to this on our podcast or phone call-in number later today. Uh, we are uh, inside today, uh, those of us you can see, um, due to the wet weather, which while it might not make it the way we want it for our worship this morning, we know that water brings life and refreshes us, and um, today's a great day to be a duck. So um, I am going to hand it over to our uh, liturgist this morning, and Barb is going to tell you about some stuff going on. Good morning. This is Barb McCarwich, your liturgist for today. And to begin with, let us extend Christian sympathies to the Schoner family on the passing of Karen's mom, um, Mrs. Leola Hunt. Also prayers for Bob Winkle and his family. He is uh, undergoing his chemo and I believe the radiation and his second uh, appointment. He's kind of took all the wind out of his sails. Uh, we have uh, October 15th, it's a Friday, we'll have a play date, it's a professional development day at school, so we invite kids to come over from 1 to 4 and play, and uh, we're going to carve pumpkins, yeah, yeah, or <laughs> paint them, uh, yeah, you know, we're, Sarah and I, we're just gluttons for punishment, <laughs> so um, if anybody is free and would like to join and suck in the guts out of those pumpkins, you're welcome to come. And then um, we have my visual aid. Ta-da! Ta-da! That's a sign-out sheet. For October 30th, it's a Saturday from 4 until 6, we are going to be having the Halloween tricks and treats. So sign up, people. I need people. If you can't be here, um, just sitting in your car handing out candy, you could donate some water bottles or juice can juice bottles, um, candy, any of that. So I'll get off the soft box, and we shall lead into. <laughs> thank you. We shall start our service with the call to worship. God lifts us from death to life. And, and preserves, preserves us, us for God's, God's purposes. Through the compassion of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the and guidance, guidance of, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. With thanksgiving, praise the Lord. With, With love, love and grace, grace spread, spread the, the good, good news. And our opening songs from um, our, praise, our praise band will be, I will call upon the Lord and then we'll follow with holy ground. Thank you. 
us join together with our opening prayer. Son of God, you walk on the waters of turmoil to meet us in the midst of your purposed journey for our lives. Help us to recognize your presence, remember your promise, rely on your power, and receive your peace through every storm. Amen. Amen. If you would join me now in our prayer for illumination. God of our present present trouble trouble and promised triumph, triumph, open our our eyes to see you in the midst of our struggles. Open our ears to hear your words of invitation and assurance. Open our minds to recall your wonderful works and miracles. Open our hearts to glory in your name and seek strength in your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning comes from Psalm chapter 85, verses 8 through 13. And it's a communal prayer for help. Uh, The verses 8 through 13 express confidence that the help prayed for will indeed come. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Christ has freely given us the gift of grace and salvation. Let us therefore freely bring our generous gifts of gratitude to him.
would join me in our doxology. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for your sustaining presence and abundant grace. Receive now these gifts we bring to you out of our generous provision in our lives. May they be used to satisfy the hungry and famine, relieve the oppressed in times of trouble, and proclaim everywhere the good news of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now it's time for our youth moment. We're going to wait one second just in case there's anybody outside who wants to come in and join us. Hold on. Hold on. We got to wait. Mommy went to go see if anybody was outside and wanted to come in. Okay, if you guys want, you can come sit right up here. Okay? Okay. All right, so how are you guys doing today? I like your masks, all kinds of different colors and stuff on them, very cool. Oh, okay. Yes, he does, he has Pikachu. So, I'm, it's okay, I promise. All right, so. Um, you guys know about Jesus, right? Yeah, we always need him. Do you remember who told you about Jesus? Who told you about Jesus? I told you about Jesus. Who told you about Jesus? Was it maybe your mom or dad? No, no, no. Or maybe Pastor Nate when he was here? Or maybe your grandma? Yeah, probably a lot of people have talked to you about Jesus. D, I need you to stay here, buddy. Okay, so when we learn about Jesus and we learn about our faith, we don't just get like a box that's got our faith in it. We have to build our faith. And that happens over time as we learn new things, as we experience things. And I thought what could be kind of fun, um, because the sermon series this month is called The Gospel According to Lego. You guys ever heard of Legos before? Yeah? Okay, D, I need you to sit still, still, please, buddy. So, Pastor Michael found some cool stuff. And D, if you would be my helper, I need you to give one of these to everybody, and then I've got one for you. So, what we're going to do over the next couple weeks is talk about the different building blocks of faith. And as we go, we're going to put those together to make a cross, which you can see on one side if you flip it over. Um, there's a cross at the top. Excuse me. Now, yeah, just like that. Now, I will admit I had not thought this very through very well. So what I'm going to let you guys do is take these home. And if you can remember to bring them back next week, that's awesome. If you forget, I've got more, okay? So don't worry. Um, so the first two blocks we're going to talk about are trust and bravery, Okay. Do you, do you guys know what it means to be brave? What do you think, AJ? What does it mean to be brave?
yeah, if it's dark outside, you can be can be brave and uh, and be safe too. Yeah. Gotcha. What were you saying? Um, I said if you were, if you were, if you were more scared, you would might, maybe if a bad man comes, you would have to not see the dark and, and run away. Okay. So yeah, sometimes we can be scared, but we can still be brave. And trust, well, trust is when when we believe or think that someone who maybe we love or someone who looks out for us is, is going to do the things they say they're going to do. And so if your mom and dad say, we're going to take care of you, do you trust them? Do you believe they're going to do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes when it comes to trust, it also talks about, you know, we also think about trusting God. And God tells us that God loves us. And God loves us so much that Jesus came and did a lot of really good things to help show that love and to take care of people. And to, that, 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 you've got one. Um, so our two building blocks for this week are bravery and trust. Well, you can pick whichever two blocks you want to be bravery and trust, okay? Oh, that would be cool. When you go to Sunday school, um, we'll, we'll help you write those words on the two blocks you pick, okay? We're going to work on it over the next couple weeks, okay? But like I said, you can take them home with you if you want. And if you forget to bring them back, I've got more. Don't worry, okay? All right, so does this sound like something we can do? Can we work on building our faith? You think so? You yeah. think the blocks will help us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, sit down. Sit, that is sit amazing. down. Okay. All right, guys. Now, normally, I would have you help us do the Lord's Prayer, but we're going to do the Lord's Prayer a little bit later when we have communion. So you guys, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. And I'm going to have you go off with Miss Sarah, and she is going to do Sunday school with you guys. And you're going to have a lot of fun. And we'll see you back later. Does that sound good? I think it's going to be just you four today, but hopefully we'll see more friends as we go, okay? All right, thank you guys so much. I do want to remind everyone, especially those of you in our, our parking lot right now, that um, we are all children of God. So if you want to come in and join us for those youth moments, you are more than welcome to. Also, uh, one quick thing I forgot to say when we started. Uh, uh, Dave Mongeson, if you are uh, here in the parking lot, could you pop in after the service? I need to give you something. Um, but now if you would join me in an attitude of prayer. God of favor and purpose, you have clothed us with the robe of righteousness. You have directed us to our destiny. You are with us in our deepest pain, fear, and bewilderment. You hear our cry when others turn a deaf ear and a cold heart. You lift us from the depths of discouragement and walk with us over the troubled waters of life. We come to you now with confidence on behalf of the church, the world, and all in need. Save us, O oh Lord, we come to you. 
for the family of God, our brothers and sisters who belong to you throughout all the world. Save us, O Lord, we come to you. For your church to fulfill its mission in the world, showing mercy, proclaiming your good news, save us, O Lord, we come to you. For peace and order to permeate your creation, responding to your commands, save us, O Lord, we come to you. For reconciliation among families, factions, and nations living in envy and conflict, save us, O Lord, we come to you. For those betrayed, beaten, thrown down or abandoned, those in bondage, fear or distress, save us, O Lord, we come to you. For the special needs of those names that we have heard this morning and that we remember now in our minds and in our hearts, save us, O Lord, we come to you. For those who have crossed before us to the other side of life's lake, save us, O Lord, we come to you. Clothe us with your favor and love. Inspire us with dreams from you. Hold us up when we falter in the storm and bring us safely to your promised place of rest and release. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to the Lord of all, who is generous to all who call upon him. If you would please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, we call, we call upon, upon you. you. Save us. us. We, we are, are intimidated, intimidated by our circumstances, circumstances distracted from, from your purposes, purposes drowning, drowning in doubts and fears. We are presumptuous about your will, belittling others and magnifying ourselves. We envy the blessings of others, secretly despising their dreams. We have hardened our hearts to the suffering of our brothers and sisters, feeding ourselves in face of the injustice that holds them captive. Lord Jesus, who searches our hearts, lift us from sin and help us to walk with you in faith, humility, and brotherly, sisterly love. Amen. Please take a few moments now for silent prayer and confession. Our God sees all, knows all, forgives all, restores all through our Lord Jesus Christ. No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let us now read together our affirmation of faith. We believe Even in one God, God master, master builder of heaven and earth. And and, and in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, who was assembled in the womb of the Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, complete in his construction, ascended into heaven, and sits at God's right hand. He will return again to judge those living and those who have died. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church of believers across this creation, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the reconstructions of the body, and, and the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. 
Our second scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Salvation is for all. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one who believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to bear without, to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we will sing our next hymn, which is Change My Heart, O God. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. This section is titled, Jesus Walks on the Water. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boats and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. 
And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would join me again in an attitude of prayer. Awesome God, you provide us with the building blocks for life, faith, love, and grace. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to teach us about these many blocks and opened our eyes to where they are all around us. You then sent the Holy Spirit into the world to help us to assemble these blocks into new and meaningful creations that are reflections of your love and mercy and grace. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to be starting our new sermon series for the month of October called The Gospel of Lego. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, Legos? What can Legos teach us about the gospel or, for that matter, faith? How can a child's toy be relevant to this kind of discussion? Did Pastor hit his head on something really hard recently? Well, to answer that last one, no, I did not, at least not that I remember. But I think over these next five weeks, you're going to be surprised at just how much we can learn from these simple plastic toys and creations. In preparing for this series, I've been reading a book by Joey Bonifacio called The Lego Principle, The Power of Connecting to God and One Another. Now, Mr. Bonifacio serves in the International Apostolic, I can never get that word when I need to, uh, team of Every Nation Ministries. Um, It's a worldwide family of churches and ministries that work to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. And while I can't claim an extensive knowledge of this group, the whole Christ-centered and spirit-empowered and socially responsible part sounds like it would connect with some of our United Methodist beliefs, especially around social principles and whatnot. For us to get a really full picture of just how our faith can be related to Legos, I want to give you guys some background on this creative toy that has inspired so many around the world. Ole Kirk Christensen was a carpenter living in Billund, Denmark. Now, he started out making household products from wood, like stools, uh, bases for Christmas trees, ironing boards, and other similar items. But in 1924, his two sons tried to light their oven in their home And unfortunately, they ended up burning down the house and as well as the business completely to the ground, which unfortunately, when you work with wood, you're going to be a little bit more susceptible to the damage that can happen with fire. Now, thankfully, the children were all saved and everything worked out. But Ole Kirk's business outlook was not shaping up so well at this point. And then in 1932, 
the Great Depression hit the United States, and the ripple effect of that reached out even as far as Denmark. Ole Kirk ended up letting his last employee go, and his wife passed away soon after. At the age of 41, he was now left alone with four sons, not enough orders for his products, and a house that he may not be able to continue to afford. But something else happened in 1932. That was when Ole Kirk began making wooden toys including yo-yos, wooden blocks, pull-along animals, and vehicles of all kinds, trucks, planes, all that stuff. And in a matter of only a few years, business was good again, and Ole Kirk began to rebuild. But then in 1942, another fire burned the new factory down, and all of the production patterns were lost. This was also during a time when Europe was facing an escalating war, so both his home products and his toys were not exactly in demand in those moments. But after the Second World War, quality wood was in short supply, and plastic was beginning to dominate the world market in many things. So in 1947, Ole Kirk bought a plastic injection molding machine, and he began to make Lego toys. Now, there is much, much more to the history of this company, but we don't have time for all of that this morning. But something of note is that Ole Kirk Christensen was a follower of Christ. Throughout all of his struggles and all the heartbreak that he had endured before the breakthrough that would become Lego toys, it was his faith that kept him going. In fact, when the Lego company was still a small business, almost all of the employees would gather in the morning before starting work for a short prayer together. Now, you may still be wondering what a Lego toy has to do with faith. Well, let's jump back to our third scripture reading for this morning. We find Jesus sending the disciples out into a boat to head to the other side of the lake while he dismisses the crowds. And then Jesus, all alone, heads up to a mountain to pray while the boat the disciples are in continues to move farther and farther away from the shore. The next morning, Jesus comes towards the boat walking on the water. And it says in the text, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. They were so frightened, they screamed. Now, I can't really fault the disciples here. I mean, I know there are are times in scriptures where it feels like the disciples are kind of clueless, not getting it, but I feel like the reaction here is, is somewhat warranted. How would you react to someone walking across the water in the middle of the lake towards you? Probably wouldn't believe your eyes and maybe even frightened. And if you're a fan of horror movies, I'm pretty sure there's at least one where Jason or somebody rises out of the lake. So I think we can cut them some slack. We must remember that their fear was not a matter of unbelief, but rather the fact that they were seeing something that they had never seen before and was so beyond their understanding of how the world works. It's likely that they might have a similar reaction if you were to drive up in a car or show them an iPhone while using FaceTime to chat with someone. It is something so outside their understanding of the world, it's terrifying. So Jesus tells them to calm down. It's just him. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, order me to come out to you on the water. Peter knows that if it is in fact Jesus, that if Jesus would tell him to come out onto the water, 
and walk to him, Jesus would make the water hold Peter up like Jesus was being held up. Peter had that much faith in Jesus already at this point. So Jesus tells him, come on out. And Peter does, and he begins to walk on the water towards Jesus. That's pretty awesome. So things are going really good, right? Mm. You see, the problem is as he is walking towards Jesus, Peter gets distracted as he sees a strong wind, and he becomes frightened. And as he becomes frightened, he begins to sink into the water, and he shouts out to Jesus, Lord, rescue me. Peter became scared about what the strong wind would do to him, maybe even the boat. And he forgot in that moment that it was Jesus that was making the water able to hold him up so that he could walk across it. And that therefore would mean that the wind wasn't going to be an issue because Jesus would take care of that too. So Jesus reaches out, he grabs Peter, and he says to him, you man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubt? And honestly, I really think this is a bit of a rhetorical question, to be honest, because I think both Jesus and Peter knew why. First off, Peter started out really well. He trusted Jesus, and he readily walked across the water. I give him a lot of credit. I'd like to think I could do that, but I don't know. I've never been in that situation. But then Peter felt the fear that we all feel, that fear we all have when we are faced with something in a situation that we can't control. It didn't matter that Jesus was allowing Peter to walk on the water because Peter saw that strong wind and his only thought was probably how the strong wind was going to knock him over and he would drown. But the other thing we need to keep in mind here is that Peter and the other disciples they're still really early in their faith in Jesus and what he has told them about. It even says in the last verse, then those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you must be God's son. Now remember, at the beginning of the story, it says Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. There is no mention of anyone else, and while we could speculate there might be someone in the boat, whether it was the boat's owner or someone there to help steer or whatever. But since several of the disciples are fishermen, I don't know that they would have needed that. So it's very possible that the only people in the boat were the disciples, and they were all saying, you must be God's son. That shows that they're still building their faith in Jesus. And so even though they've already seen Jesus heal people, they've heard him preach, they've even seen him calm the storm, which was six chapters earlier than this event, even with all of that, they're still working to build their faith. The message that Jesus was bringing was radical. And in those times, there had been many false messiahs. The Jewish people had been waiting for a really, really long time for the promised coming Messiah. And many probably by that point had become a bit skeptical after several decades and several false messiahs. But I don't think this should be a big surprise when we look at all of what was going on. Jesus was giving his disciples and followers all of these different pieces through his messages and through his healing and his miracles. And it takes some time 
to put all those pieces together to start to form something, just like Legos. If you have ever opened a set of new Legos or watched someone else do it, you will see that there are several plastic bags with little pieces and a set of directions. But even with those instructions, it still takes some time to put all those pieces together until you get to the expected completed piece or design. With the disciples, Jesus was giving them not only the pieces, but also the instructions to follow. Sometimes, though, they didn't understand exactly what Jesus meant, so there may have been times that it took them a little bit longer to get things put together. There's another way I think that Legos and faith can be seen as alike. With Legos, you may finish putting together the set that you have, but it usually doesn't stay that way for very long. You tend to change it up a bit here and there. You may even break it apart completely and build something totally different. And if you have more Legos, there are certainly going to be added in at some point to build something else. Truth is, with Legos, you're, you're never really done building. And the same is true of faith. When we, just when we think we've got the whole thing all together and figured out, we're given more pieces to add. Sometimes our faith may change in, in small ways, sometimes in big ways. As our life progresses and we learn more about God, we experience things, our faith changes. Sometimes with faith, we need to tear it all down and build something new, maybe something completely different. And when we share our faith with each other, we start to mix those pieces together to build something even bigger and better, just like Legos. As I kind of mentioned to our kids this morning, when it comes to faith, we can't just hand someone a Bible and say, okay, you're a Christian now. Faith requires work. Yes, we have the help of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but we have to be active in this too. Faith is a lot like a box of Legos. We see what a completed picture looks like on the outside. But once we open it up and begin to build, well, we might build that same thing. We might build something completely different because each of us are different. Yes, our faiths share commonalities. We share the belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's part of what makes us Christians. But we may not all picture Jesus the same way. We may not all share the exact same beliefs on how things are described in the Bible or how they are recorded as occurring. We may not all share the exact same feelings on many topics. But we're all building our faith. Where we run into trouble, though, is when we stop building. Our faith is never, never fully complete. There is always something new every day that can help us in building our faith or reconstructing part of our faith. I'm not saying every morning when you wake up you need to tear your faith down to nothing and begin rebuilding. But when we stop building at all, then something else is going on. If we stop building our faith, does it mean that we are arrogant enough to think that our faith is complete, that there is nothing more to come, nothing more we can learn? 
Does it maybe mean that we're struggling with our faith? Could it mean that we have given up on our faith? All of those are potential answers. The key, though, is to never stop building. We must always be willing to accept the new pieces of faith that we receive from God and the Holy Spirit and work to use them in building our faith. And, and think about this for a moment. If you were to take 10 identical boxes of Legos with, with no instructions and give them to 10 different children, or adults for that matter, and you tell them, build whatever you want, what do you think is going to happen? From my experience, I think you're going to get 10 different creations. Even if all the pieces were the same, you could very easily get 10 very different results. Just like faith. It was the faith of Ole Kirk Christensen that got him through those tough times. A faith that he had to continue to build on as well. And talk about faith. This man saw his home and business burn to the ground twice. He lost his wife at 41 and had to care for four, not just four children, four boys. And if you've got boys, you know that can be a challenge. And through it all, this man never gave up. His faith helped him to continue on because he kept building his faith. And I hope that is something that we can all embrace and do ourselves. Amen. If you would please turn to the page in your bulletin with our liturgy for Holy Communion um, and Hopefully you have your, your Jesus. Um, if you need Jesus, um, if you are able to flag down um, an usher, they can probably get you some. But if you would please join me now in that liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion, and what that means is when things get back to normal, and I'm doing this from that table and not the pulpit, that table belongs to Jesus. Jesus has welcomed everyone. You don't need to be a member of this church or a Methodist or a member of any other denomination. It doesn't matter your race, your gender, your mental or physical ability, your sexual orientation, your uh, financial holdings, whether you're young or old, baptized or unbaptized, all those ways we try to separate ourselves from each other and divide ourselves, that's not how Jesus looks at us. We are all beloved children of God in his eyes. All he asks is that when you come forward to partake, that you do so with an open heart. Now, this morning as we continue with our individual communion, um, there are two ways you can do this, as I mentioned typically. You can do intinction, which is a big word that means you can take your bread and dip it in your juice and then receive the elements that way. Or you can eat the bread and then drink the juice. Those are both acceptable. Neither one is better than the other. It is all good in the eyes of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, body and blood of Christ given for you and for the salvation of the world, please now receive your elements. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 614, For the Bread Which You Have Broken. <laughs>
beloved children of the Most High God, the word of faith is near you on your lips and in your heart. How shall others hear unless you proclaim it? Go now in the generous grace and favor of our God. How beautiful are the feet of you who bring good news. May the generous blessing and favor of our loving abundance, God, lift you, sustain you, and send you to the world with the gift of life. Amen. Have a blessed week.